Good evening, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Overtime Podcast with Sparksy and Jared on this last day of June of 2020. Jared Moore, can you believe we are halfway through the year? I know. It just seems like yesterday and school was ending technically in March, and now here we are almost halfway through summer, it feels like. It does, and the temperatures certainly are feeling summer-like. Uh, but when we hit July, we start to think, you know, fall sports – we're unknown what's going to go on with the whole COVID thing. But as far as I'm concerned, I start thinking football in July. And we are pleased and honored to have a special guest tonight. Recently uh, announced new head coach at Bucyrus High School for their football program, Coach Tim Plumley. And Coach Plumley, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Certainly appreciate your time. Oh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you guys. I was uh, pleased to be asked to do it. I appreciate it. Sure. It's our pleasure. And uh, it's interesting because it's a homecoming for you. You're a 1989 graduate of B. Cyrus High School and then went on to The Ohio State University, graduated uh, with a degree in physical therapy from uh, Buckeye Land in 1993. And currently uh, you're one of the owners of Mohican Sports Medicine. You're not a teacher at the school system, but uh, uh, you began there in January of 2000. You have locations of Bucyrus. Mansfield and Mount Vernon and anybody out there looking for uh, some great physical therapy I've done some work there they do great work there and they don't let you slouch they push you pretty hard so uh, I can appreciate that uh, you've been an assistant or you were an assistant at Bucyrus for 16 years before going on to Cardington the last two years as head coach uh, finishing with a 3-17 and 17 record in those two years and then hired in back at your alma mater on March 13th, which ironically was the last day of school. school. Tell That's us about true. that. That's true. Oh, it was a crazy day. Um, uh, I was called at, uh, Cyrus called me at 1230 and offered uh, the position and the job and uh, um, I accepted it. And then it, it just kind of dawned on me that this was the last day of school and the last thing I wanted um, was for the kids at Cardington to find out from someone other than me. Mm. So I, I made a beat. I, at the time, I was actually in Mount Vernon at our facility in Mount Vernon, and I made a beeline to Cardington to get there um, right when uh, school was letting out so that I could meet with uh, the kids there. And I'm glad I was able to because I wouldn't have felt – it wouldn't have felt right if I would have left the position and then never seen them again, which is – or you know, since school never really got back in, it would have been very difficult. Um, and then, you know, later that afternoon, I was back in town and excited to see um, all the Bucyrus guys and just kind of, you know, revel and enjoy that emotion of um, getting a position that I'd wanted for a long time. They kind of dreamed about, really. Um, you know, your alma mater is important to you. And um, I, I owe the school in the city of Bucyrus, the town of Bucyrus, a lot. So this, this, it meant a lot to me to get the position. Sure. Yeah, I think that, I think that speaks volumes. You know, you want to tell your team in Cardington before school is completely out and you won't have that chance again. So I think that speaks a lot of volumes about your character. And going off of that, you played Bucyrus last year. And how was that going up against your alma mater and now the school that you're at head coaching with? Oh yeah, well, um, it, particularly the the first year, it was really really uh, a mixed bag of emotions because I'm really competitive, um, really competitive with the uh, the, the coaching staff, uh, you know, your friends and everything, um, uh, and um, wanted definitely wanted to win, um, but there was there were some like kind of awkward moments, um, and particularly that first year because the kids. Um, there were a couple of kids that almost wanted to come up and talk to me during the game. And it just was kind of a weird feeling to be um, on the other sideline that, for, that the first year. Um, the second year was a, a little smoother. Um, I think the kids and myself were used to, to seeing each other on the opposite sideline. But that first year, it was, it was really odd. Um, you know, I, there were times when you weren't sure how to, to, to respond to things. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, either side of the ball as coaches, it's, it's just about always about the kids and, um, and helping them um, meet their goals. 
Uh, but once we walk on the field, it, it, it's very competitive and, you know, you want to win, um, particularly when you know that you're going to, all your friends are on the other side and you'd like to have that feather in your cap when you get together. You know, it's a situation that uh, student athletes and those that are close to it understand the important role that coaches play in the lives of young people. And, and that goes way above and beyond the wins and losses and, and the overall record. And even though you were just at Cardington for two years, I'm sure there were some difficult conversations at the end of games that you weren't successful. But tell us a little bit about how difficult that last meeting with your kids telling them that you were going to a different program uh, and, and the challenges that you faced in that discussion? Oh, it's a, it's a really hard discussion. And, um, you, you know, and at first when the, the Bucyrus job to open up, I wasn't sure I was, it wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to go for it again. It, it, um, it was the second year in a row with the situation. And um, you, you develop really close, um, relationships with the kids and that makes it really hard to leave and and also it makes that ending conversation that much harder because I've asked we as a coach you ask all those kids to commit time to the program time to the weight room getting better uh, believing in your values and, and all those things and and then you have to explain to them that you know every every event every situation that you put yourself in you you're going to work as hard as you can, believe in what you're doing until maybe a, situ a situation or an opportunity that's better, better for yourself and your family or your life. And, and then, and then you thank everyone and then you go to the next step and you, and you do that no matter where you're at in life, no matter what your job is, no matter where you're at, you go to that position and give it everything you have. And, and I hope that that's what I, the Cardington kids learned from me and from the situation. It was really hard to leave. There, there's a lot of good kids there, and they're, they were really supportive of, of me, and I, I loved it there. If it, it, wouldn't, it, had, it wouldn't have been just any job for me to leave. I mean, it, it was this job. So going off of that, you know, and you have to tell some of the coaches as well. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any coaches that are coming with you to be Cyrus? I do not. Um, they uh, they hired with they hired uh, the defensive coordinator, and he was able to uh, keep most of them. There was one that I particularly tried, uh, but he, he's uh, he's still there. Um, but uh, I do not have any staff members from Cardington. But the some of the guys that were on the Bucyrus staff hopefully will be staying on, and guys. There are there are a couple. There are a couple. We have had uh, uh, a pretty significant uh, turnover. Um, you know, we have uh, Coach Jenkins, who's from uh, – he coached at Clear Fork for years. Um, Coach, Siebert's st Coach Siebert and Slanska are, are staying on. Coach Stake. So there's, there's three coaches from the previous staff and then three new ones. So um, I think we got a really good staff, uh, a couple young guys, which uh, is good. We have a balance of guys that are my age and guys that are about half my age. So uh, – <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a good balance, though, you know. So I, I think the kids appreciate having uh, some younger guys around. So going off of that, you you start the end of school, and what were some of the first meetings about with your new coaches and the students? Obviously, you couldn't meet with them in person. So I guess staying in contact might have been a little bit difficult. And was there a little yeah. surprise from the kids, uh, first off, um, that there wasn't any spring sports to go off and actually get the chance to meet you in person. Yeah, that, that was the hardest thing. Um, uh, and I'll, I'll be honest, the first two weeks, uh, you know, just with the timing of the COVID, um, I was pretty angry, you know, just not, and just anything. And obviously, calm down, it's interrupted everyone's life, but I really wanted to get started. I wanted to meet the Bucyrus kids. I wanted to get started. And, and this was this, this, virus wasn't allowing it to happen very self-centered individualistic view of the world but you know that's where it was at the time but calm down and you get a better scope and realize what what's needed uh, but that was very difficult we did do uh we had some zoom meetings um and the kids participated very well with those um and just to go over values and who we are 
And then we started going over the offense and defense. You know, we were able to do that. You could tell at the end, though, we got into May, and their interest in doing Zoom meetings was really starting. We, we had pretty good uh, interest in that through most of April, but we got into May. You know, they, they were getting antsy. The kids were. Um, we also had uh, Zoom meetings with the coaching staff, um, and that and, the, and it's the, the same type of thing. I, I think it's real important that everyone buys in and believes into to our values, what we're trying to do. Um, you know, from the top down. You, you know, the, the, the coaches. It starts with the coaches. If the coaches don't believe in what we're doing, then the kids aren't going to believe either. So that 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 was important to stress that, and. Uh, you know, I, we have a bunch of good guys who care about the kids, so I'm, I'm excited to get out there. We have gotten out there a little bit within the, the restrictions of what we can do. Um, and next week, next week, uh, you know, we'll start practicing a little bit more, um, you know, within within the rules of what we can do. We're visiting with a uh, new head football coach at Bucyrus High School, Tim Plumley, and Coach uh, uh, Cyrus is coming off a fairly successful season, uh, better mm -hmm. than they've had uh, in years past, a five and five uh, uh, overall record. But there were 12, or excuse me, 13 key seniors uh, sure. that will not be coming back. Uh, ben Seibert, uh, the quarterback, being really one of them. Uh, but you have, according to your roster last year, six that were juniors that would be coming back. But you've been doing a lot of knocking on doors and bringing some kids that maybe weren't in the program back. So I want to oh, talk, yes. a bit, talk a little bit about that and also the kids that you do have coming back. Sure. Um, no, we've been uh, – we are actually, as far as the total number of kids on the team, we'll have more this year than what they had last year. Um, we have a pretty large freshman class coming up, uh, four or five new kids in that class. Um, there's two or three seniors coming back that uh, maybe played when they were younger. Spencer Huff, Lane Carter um, are coming back. And um, in each class, there's a couple kids. Um, so th th there's interest there. Um, we, we lost, uh, there's a lot of interest. We lost, obviously, a, lot, a good group of seniors um, that were integral in that, uh, in being um, five and five. And I've, I've talked to the coaches and the kids. You know, they felt like they left a couple on the table, you know, particularly that Mohawk game and uh, could have been uh, a little bit better. The league was good. Uh, you know, Seneca East was good. Carey's real, a strong team. Winford's always good. You know, Colonel Crawford, it's just the same team. So we have our work cut out for us. We're going to have a lot of uh, new kids in new positions playing different positions. Um, they're familiar names, but uh, the role's going to be bigger. Um, and, uh, you know, Bryant Pfeiffer's back. He's going to be uh, a really strong uh, lineman on offense and defensive, probably an all-league type player. Nick Middleton's a senior. Um, he was injured a lot last year, had surgery on his thumb. He's not a big kid, but he's really quick and fast and dependable. So um, we, have a, we have a lot of kids coming back that, kid that uh, are working hard and uh, will help us get the job done. You mentioned having your, your work cut out for you. You have a couple of tough non-league games against Galleon, Crestview, and Northmore. And I guess mm -hmm. just off of that, heading into the beginning of the season, before you get into the N10, just explain the importance about playing some of those tough non-conference games to get ready for that uh, struggle in the N10. Well, I, I think that uh, your non-conference games uh, will set the tone. Uh, you, you'll – you'll respond, we'll respond to the challenge. Um, and, you know, and it'll help us prepare because they're, they're, none of those teams are, are we going to take lightly. Um, they're all very good teams and um, we're aware of that. And, you know, our non-conference starts off with uh, Winford. Um, we, we, we start off right off the bat. Like I think our, we have those three games and it's like Winford, Cary, Seneca East, um, so, you know, our, our, our schedule is loaded from the beginning. So we got to be ready to go and, uh, you know, come out, come out firing. And so that, that non-conference schedule will, will help us uh, prepare for that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you mentioned the, the league and, and, but the blessing is that 
arguably some of the top teams in the league, that being Winford, Senekes, Carey, and Colonel Crawford, are all going to be at your place. Uh, mm-hmm. You do have to go on the road to Mohawk, Buckeye Central, and Upper Sandusky, but you do get, let's face it, the top echelon teams uh, for the majority of them uh, at home. And I know it's really too soon to tell. You know, I was getting pretty excited as uh, things were starting to opening back up, and uh, unfortunately the news lately has maybe not sure. been as uh, um, as positive as I would have hoped uh, with new cases coming out. What do you think? I mean, you have to prepare your kids and your coaches as if it's going to go off as planned. But in the back of your mind, have you thought what it might be like to be out there at the stadium with no fans in the stands? Yeah, I think that would uh, uh, really change the the environment. Would, would you still play and still play hard? Absolutely. But, you, you know, you talk about – anybody talks about high school football in Ohio – or anywhere is it's the Friday night lights. And part of that is, you know, the lights are on, the people from the community are there and cheering you on. You have the, the, the cheerleaders, the bands, uh, you know, grandma and grandpa, mom and dad. And we're, we're a small town. Those things are important. And um, the, great band, the great band of Osiris too. Yeah, and, and, that, and that, that's part of why we coach, you know, is, is that environment to still be part of it. So. You know, I hope it doesn't come to that. But if it does, we'll go out and play the games and prepare like we normally would. But it, it would it would be missing something, definitely. So, obviously, you're a couple of weeks in here with your uh, preseason stuff. Just going off of that, and some things have changed here recently, um, allowing some certain contact drills and mm-hmm. what – I guess just explain how difficult it's been so far here in the first couple of weeks and what kind of changes that you've had to make as far as practices are concerned? Well, uh, right now we, we've kind of focused on uh, more uh, skill-based things that we can do um, that doesn't, that isn't bringing the whole team into a group or, or like that. obviously in this time of year, you can't tackle and, and full go anyhow. Uh, but we haven't even we haven't even gotten you could compete against each other. We haven't even started. Next week we'll probably start some seven on seven against ourselves um, because that that's what permitted within the rules. But we haven't even got that far right now. We we've thrown routes um, and worked on the, like individual drills and that. So that's been the focus of any time that we've had on the field. Um, the big change at first was in the weight room, keeping the group small for the first two or three weeks you know, nine, nine kids and, and a coach. And, the, you know, the kids really, I felt, adapted well to the weight room. And I think there were some things we learned that going, doing it differently, things that we learned that we liked, maybe moving forward that we'll incorporate, that we just won't automatically go back to exactly how we did it before this, even when we're allowed. Um, so there were some things that we learned that we think would benefit us in the future from doing it differently. You know, Coach, back in uh, the day, in my officiating days, I looked forward to two certain Saturdays in July when Bucyrus hosted Mm -hmm. their huge seven-on-seven tournaments. And after about seven hours on the field, I wondered why I went out there and did that when it was 90 degrees and I could barely walk at the end of it. But uh, with this whole COVID situation, will you be able to do events like that or will those be postponed this year? You know, I'm not sure. Um, I, you, you, you mentioned the last week or two. Two weeks ago, I felt I was feeling confident. Yes, we're going to have them. Everything's going well. Um, the last seven, ten days or so, my confidence has probably dipped. And, and those, we, they're still planned. Um, we sent the information out. We have volunteers. Um, you know, we're going to have the infrastructure in place so that if the rules permit us that we can do it, um, I can say, yes, we're doing it. You know, if we didn't have the infrastructure in place, we wouldn't be able to put it together if the rules change. But I'm not sure is the best answer right now. Um, You know, I, I, as it, as everybody, everybody wishes we had more concrete answers with this. And uh, I know a lot of people get frustrated I'm not having the answers, but you know, at this point, there isn't. There's a good one. Um, I, I'm definitely planning to have them, and if we're allowed, they'll go off at whatever capacity is permitted. 
So we touched on this off uh, the video a little bit right before we went on with your interview. And Mike talks about being an official occasionally, and you've had that experience of him being an official at some of your games. So I just want you to tell the truth here. Is Mike a good official? Yes. And, and I said that I'm not doing it because he's right in front of me. He's, he's an awesome, excellent official. And for two reasons, um, I'm, I'm not sure it was always right. But I'm, I'm joking, Mike. He, he most, <laughs> most of the time was. But when we when I when I did have a disagreement, he would come over and talk talk to me like a normal person and explain to me what he saw and what he thought. And you know that that just appeased me just because he talked to me and said, "Hey, coach, this is what I saw. This is what I think." You know, and if and there'd be times I'd walk away, go, "Man, I don't I don't think that's what happened," but. But just the, the his disposition and his mannerisms, um, you know, just diffused the situation. And um, and the biggest thing is is that he respected he re he respected the kids too. He talked to the kids that way, respected the game and the coaches enough to actually explain to us what he saw and why he made that, as opposed to just tell us to back off and you know leave me alone. Um, as a coach, that's probably the most frustrating thing when an official does that when you want to know why something was called and they just tell you to back off, well, that just sets you off. So in Sparks, he, he, he worked well with the kids too. Our kids would ask him questions and he would explain, you know, Saturday morning's a little different than Friday night too. You have those opportunities, yeah. um, but he's, he was great at that. He, he's, he was uh, as an official and still now just supports the, the game of football. Great. And I'll give you your twenty dollars, or, or uh, <laughs> the twenty dollars later. Okay, Sparky. Well, I, you know, when Jared brought that up, I, I got to refresh your memory. And if you think back a number of years, and Mark Music was playing on on Saturday morning and back in punt formation, and uh, he got the punt off and went down like somebody shot him from the stands and made a noise. And you, were, I didn't throw the flag, and you just went ballistic on me. And I looked down at Mark and I said, not today, son. And he just starts laughing at me because yeah. nobody even was close to him. But he sure did a great acting job. And, and you tried to help sell it from the sideline for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get involved. You get involved. You know, it's it being that competitive. That, that's that's part of the reason you, you want to coach and stay in it, um, to feed that side of your personality. I, I got to ask, uh, because you did mention early off that, you know, after being at Desiris for 16 years and then going away and getting some head coach experience and coming back to your alma mater and paying back to what so many people in the school system and the community did for you and your career, I guess the question that begs to be answered is, what is the mark that Coach Tim Plumley wants to leave on this program? Not that it's a short-term thing, but what's the biggest impact that you want to leave in the Redmond program moving forward? I... There, there's a couple things. First off, I, I want the kids kids to believe in themselves, uh, to believe in Bucyrus, and to take great pride that they're from Bucyrus. I do, um, both being from the town and grad, being uh, an alumnus of the of the school. Um, and then I also want them to learn to work, um, and you know, to 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 create uh, hardworking men and and women. Now we have a couple girls on our team. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I want them to learn that process to be people of great character, people that understand how to work, how to set goals, um, and to go out and once they leave Bucyrus High School, that they'll be a good citizen, take care of their, take care of their business, do things the right way. You know, th those are the big goals. I think if we teach kids to do that, we'll win on the field. You, you, you know, if those are the values and your kids are learning that by, you know, learning a good, a great work ethic, um, the, the success will come on the field. But, you know, those, those are the, the, the marks. I want, I want to, you know, the belief in, in Bucyrus and then also, um, you know, creating great people of character. So, well, Coach Plumley, we've, uh, we've asked all the easy questions. Now it's time all right. to ones you ready for a little rapid fire sure all right so obviously the restaurants and everything were shut down for a while if you had one restaurant to go to it was the only restaurant on the face of the earth which one would it be 
Well, it, it would have to be a steakhouse somewhere, one of the steakhouses that uh, I could get a good steak. You know, but, but that's my that's my go-to meal. You know, I don't have one in particular, but you know, I can get a good uh, good uh, ribeye or fillet, and I'll be happy, happy man. <laughs> Outstanding. So, uh, if I were to confiscate your telephone or iPad or whatever it is, and got to your playlist. What is your go-to band or musician that uh, just gets you ready for a game or pumps you up or, or even when it's a downtime to mellow out and relax to? Well, you're, you're going to find a little bit of everything. Um, but uh, my go-to band, I, I am a kid of the, eight, the late 80s, so the Guns N' Guns Roses, late <laughs> 80s, early 90s. You know, as far as getting me pumped and going – Guns N' Roses is always, and I'm sure people listen to this to laugh because there's plenty of Guns N' Roses stories in my background and as a kid. Um, but I, I also like, you know, if I want to mellow out and just listen to some, I like Elton John from the 70s and, um, you know, a little bit of everything. Um, but the, 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 hit, the hair band, the 80s, and a little bit of the grunge. I, I Grunge was more my college years starting, but... <laughs> All right. have, you, uh, <laughs> have you had to learn to adapt to some of the music that the kids listen to nowadays oh definitely a hundred percent on 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 some levels th 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 there's one part of it that just, just not just the sound of it but some of the personalities in it like um you know i struggle with uh drake sometimes just because he always interferes with toronto rap with small games you, you, you know, it's like, go sit down. I always, I always listen, remember Charles Barkley telling a story about Drake that he said he would tell one of his, his teammates to throw a ball in the direction of, of Drake so that he could go after it. And I said, I, I, that's kind of how I would feel. But, you know, I, I've learned to appreciate it. There, there's some of it that uh, as long as I put the, the filter on it so it's not blaring in the weight room. <laughs> You've had uh, a lot of coaching experience, uh, just a couple of years as head coach, but you've been to a lot of different places. Uh, what's kind of your favorite atmosphere other than at Bucyrus to coach a game? Well, what stadium? You know, I've been, I also covered games uh, uh, as a physical therapist. And I covered Kenton in the mid 90s and their league is awesome. And I'm trying to think, I think it was, uh, I think it was Salina. Had pine trees, and then they were the fans were not five feet behind us, and it was just <laughs> a rabid group of fans, and and just the way that the, that's a great league, obviously that that they're in, and I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, I used to I used to enjoy uh, going up to Tiffin when I played. You know, I enjoyed that stadium. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's a larger, and they usually feel that they were pretty good back in the eighties. Um, in this area. So um, those are some other ones. If you go into the to the, the K-Mac, like you go to East Knox, um, which they have a nice field, but it's it's really small confines. You got the school right there. Um, and then that makes for uh, a good environment if you pack in people close, which, you know, like I said, the, the coronavirus ch uh, changed that, which uh, hopefully doesn't change it too much. Yeah, very good. So who is your uh, toughest coach or toughest player to coach against? Uh, you know, I, you got to give it to, to uh, uh, Travis and then Gabe out at Winford, you know, the, the sustained success that, that, that they've had out there for 20 years now. And, um, you know, and, uh, and Steve Helbert, um, the, the just been continued success uh, even their down years aren't aren't bad you know so um you got you got to give you got to give those guys a lot of credit well, coach plumley we need to wrap things up here um anybody you'd like to shout out tonight or maybe a, a parting comment as uh we we finish up for the evening um th there, there's there's a couple things um first off i just um you know, we, we kind of had a tragedy in our family at the school this week with a student and, and the student was uh, uh, the brother of one of the graduating seniors, uh, was Will Pfeiffer, had passed away and it's Andrew's brother. And I just want to, 
um, you know, if they're listening there, anybody, let everybody know that, you know, we hate the Pfeiffer family and Andrew and everybody that they're in our thoughts and our prayers. And, um, you know, this is, we preach as coaches, we often preach family, that we're a family. And this is, this is times like this, that it, that it really, it really matters and makes a difference that you have a group to belong to because it, this is tough. And particularly for the kids at that age, they don't always, you know, they haven't gone through this as much as someone our age. So I, I just want to let the Pfeiffer family know that we're all thinking about them and we love them dearly. Very good. Jared, anything from you to wrap up for tonight? Just appreciate your time, Coach. And uh, like everybody else has been saying, hopefully we have football this fall and that's, I think, the one thing that everybody's looking forward to. I, I am. I am. It was it was such a great relief the first day that we got out and could throw a football, kick, kick a football, snap a football, whatever it was, that uh, it just was a big relief and a burst of energy. So I appreciate you guys having me on. Very good. Well, we wish you the very much success and uh, that you have a great experience, have a very successful year, whatever – mode it looks like or uh, whatever form it takes on. But uh, welcome back to Bucyrus Coach, and uh, we wish you the best of luck and appreciate you coming on so very, very much. All right. Thank you, guys. You bet. I need to remind everybody that the comments and views expressed in this podcast series are those of Mike Sparks, Jared Moore, and our guest. And this podcast is not associated in any way with WBCO or WQEO radio. That'll put a wrap to this edition of the Overtime Podcast with Sparksy and Jared. Jared, we'll be uh, talking to see who we're going to have on next. And uh, if I don't talk to you before that, have a great 4th of July. Okay, sound good? Sounds good. And we'll have a special edition as well coming out this week after this podcast uh, with a special veteran for the 4th of July holiday. So look forward to that on the website as well. Very good. So we'll put a close to this edition, and I'll remind you as I do each and every week, a spirit with a vision is a dream with a mission. Have a good night, everybody.